Hello and welcome everybody. In this episode, we will talk about production floor execution interface, a new feature for Dynamics 365 supply chain management. We will go through a step-by-step -step guide of deploying necessary components for the production floor execution. Then we will go into the supply chain application itself to configure the production floor execution. And then we will talk about the new features that became available with the shop floor execution interface, such as HoloLens guides. So let's get started. First, let's just go through a basic idea of what the production floor execution interface is. It's basically an evolution of the shop floor control terminals that Microsoft introduced over a period of time. For people that are familiar with the production control functionality of supply chain application may remember that the first iteration of this shop floor control was the job card terminal right here. That was more suited for a mouse and a keyboard terminal, some sort of PC that sits on the shop floor. The next step in that evolution was a job card device, which had bigger buttons and, were, and was more suitable for touchscreen devices such as tablets. So the production floor execution is basically a next step in that evolution. We will make sure that our supply chain application has a correct version. Click on the question mark here about. So in order for you to use that feature, you have to be running a version 10.0.15 or later. Then we will make sure that we have enabled that feature. So we will navigate to a feature management workspace and make sure that our production floor execution feature is enabled. And as of December 9th, that feature is still in preview mode. Once that is done, we will navigate to production control module, go to the setup area, manufacturing execution, and then click on the configure production floor execution. Here we can create a, a different number of configurations. Each configuration has a different settings that control the behavior of the terminal. And again, for the people that are familiar with the production floor may notice that these options here are basically identical to the ones that you can see for the job floor device configuration. So here I created two configurations. One is called floor and one is called SFC, shop floor control. Once that is done, we will then navigate to the manufacturing execution area right here and click on the production floor execution. So here you see the interface is slightly different. It's, it's a bit more graphical. It has a different background color. And um, it even has this sanitize button that allows you to put your touch screen into non-touch screen mode so you can clean the screen before the use. So let's configure it. So we will click on this gear uh, button over here on the, in the bottom left corner. Here we would be able to select one of those configurations that we have uh, seen in the previous step. So let's say we're going to be using the floor. We will click on next button right here. Here you need to define a filter that would be applied to all the production jobs to filter only the ones that are belong to either specific production unit, resource group or resource. You can click on this hourglass right here. It would show you different resources that are available. So for, the, for this demonstration, I will be working with production jobs that belong to the resource group STD. Once we've done the, our filter selection, we will click on the OK button to finish the process. Now we can log in either using the batch ID or personal ID. And now let's just like, let's take a look at overall layout of our form. So it consists of four main areas. So we have buttons on the left that allow us to clock in our against an indirect activity such as break or any specific indirect activity. So it's a very similar to an existing functionality. I will not be going through uh, it in more detail, but here you would be able to select a break type, click on OK, and the system would autom automatically clock you out. So let's do that again. So we, here we are, we need to clock in again. And then the system will ask us, do you want to leave or do you want to stop break? Well, let's do the stop break and we're back into our interface right here. This would allow us to clock our time against different direct activities, such as different meetings. So let's cancel out of it. And this one would allow us to either log out, basically lock in the terminal without clocking out for the day, or clock out itself. That means done for the day. So this is our main area here. So let's take a look at this uh, section right here. So this one shows us all the jobs that are assigned to the uh, resource group standard, or we can look at active jobs here. 
So it's worth noting this uh, uh, icon that represents the status of the job. Of course, we can get some idea from this bottom section right here, but generally speaking, if there is no indicator at all, that means the job has not been started. If we see a green triangle such as this, that means the job has been started and currently is in progress. If we see two vertical bars, uh, that means the job has been paused or stopped. And of course, the completed jobs will disappear uh, altogether, so they will not be visible here at all. And you will notice this bottom section right here gives us more details about a specific job that we have highlighted here. So it shows us the name of the production job, it shows us the name of the product, it shows the schedule from to, date and time for the production job, and also the status. In this case, this job is 100% complete. And let's take a look at the buttons that we have available right here on the right-hand side. The main difference that I noticed by just playing around with this terminal is that this terminal allows us to start and report feedback against multiple production jobs at the same time. So what I mean by that is when we select these jobs, we can click on the start job here, and here we will see that uh, the system offers us to enter the quantity that we would like to start for each of the jobs that we have selected. So we have two jobs right here. So we can click on the, uh, this uh, section right here. It's going to pop up this touch-friendly terminal where we will be able to enter the quantity that we would like to start. Of course, I already started and completed five, so I'm not going to do that. But the idea here is that you would be able to do the same thing for the other job and for the other jobs that you have selected. So I think that's a very convenient feature. So let's just go and start and make sure the start quantity of zero, and that's it. So the system clocks us out, let's, let's clock back in. And now we would be able to select all those jobs, and then we would be able to report feedback against multiple jobs at the same time as well, right? So here the navigation is slightly different. Here we need to select quantity that we would like to report as good, and then click on the next button right here to select uh, a second job, and then enter the quantity for the second job. And once we've done that, Let's do both complete. We'd we'll be able to click on report progress. We, I also noticed that you have a separate section for reporting scrap. For the job card terminal or device, it was basically within the same screen production uh, report feedback where you'd be able to uh, jump between the good quantity and the scrap count quantity. In this case, this button is used to report only good quantity, and if you would like to report Scrap quantity, you need to do it through a separate screen. So very similar layout to the report feedback action, right? The only difference here is we would be able to report quantities that are scrapped and we would be able, be able to select an error cost. All right, and you may notice here, so this is basically overall layout, and you may notice a, a guide button here, that kind of a new thing that did not exist in the previous variations of the show floor control terminal. So what does that feature allows us to do is it allows us to initiate uh, guides that are suitable for HoloLens device that would assist us in the execution of a specific uh, production job. So basically, it's, it's a, a possibility for operators to start a guide that would guide them through a sequence of operations needed to complete that specific production job, right? Before we click on that button, I would like to talk to you about all the steps that uh, need to take place in order for you to activate that feature. All right, so the first thing we will need to do is you have to put your environment, your supply chain environment into the maintenance mode, and you need to go and activate, go to the system administrator, license configuration, and you have to make sure that you activate this mixed reality feature right here, right? So it's not done through a feature management for some reason, it has to be done through a license configurator. I'm not sure why the inconsistency, but may, may, maybe Microsoft will change it in the future. So in this case, I have activated this D365 guides for manufacturing. So that's a step number one. Then you need to go and follow this guide right here. So you need to first make sure that you have the guides licenses. In this case, I clicked on this button right here. It opened me a guide. I will then click on the um, trial. I click on the get started right here. And then I clicked on the sign up right here, enter my work email, and then basically uh, activated a 30-day trial of Microsoft Guides. Once that is done, you will then be able to assign these Guides licenses to a user using the Office 365 admin. This is my profile right here. 
and you can see that I have one license of Dynamics 365 guides assigned. Once that is done, we will then have to make sure that we have at least one CDS environment. Based on the guides, if uh, they say if you are using a trial version of the guides, you need to uh, uh, deploy the solution in your default environment. And if you have a paid uh, subscription, then you need to deploy it in your production environment. But from my experience, I was able to activate a trial version in my production environment. What we will need to do here is we will navigate to our Dynamics 365 apps. And once you're in here, you should be able to search for guides. So here you would be able to select these guides right here, click on install. And here you would then select the environment to which you would like to install your uh, solution. So here I select the production environment. That is gonna take some time, around a half an hour or so. Once that is done, you should be able to see your solution in your environment. So in this case, I will click on here, and here I see my uh, deployed guide solution right here. So that takes care of the environment and the deployment of the solution. The next step would be to go and install guides app. And based on this uh, guide right here, there are several options. So we, you can have an, a PC authoring app or the HoloLens app. So I went to the App Store and I deployed the HoloLens app. But once I did that, I kind of realized that I could not really do much here without the HoloLens device. So first I needed to add a device, which I don't have. Um, and therefore, I was not able to do much using this HoloLens app itself. So what I did next then is I go and deploy the guides app. So this is what I will open up for you here. So here we need to sign in. Once we log in, we need to select the environment in which our guides solution was deployed. In this case, it's this one, the first one. I'm going to click on OK. And here we would be able to go and create a different number of guides, right? So we can create a new guide. There is a naming thing, test 100. Let's call it like this. And then you will have to go through a steps of defining an anchor. And then you can then create an outline by adding different steps, such as the question or the completion steps, etc. But once that is done, you have your new guides in, in that list right here. How do these guides actually become available in a supply chain application? So for this, we would need to make sure that we have a dual write running between the environment in which our guide solution was deployed and the supply chain application. Let's check it out. So navigate to the data management workspace, click on dual write. So here we have a configured dual write, write between uh, an environment in which we have this guide solution deployed and our FinOps application. And then you have to make sure that there is a specific uh, map that is running. I think that map has a word guide in it. So yeah, exactly right here. So here's our map called Mixed Reality Guides Entity. And you can see it's basically one of the few ones that I have running for this application. So that needs to be in place. We can also open a guides app, uh, application itself. Here it will give us the list of all the guides that we have created using this authoring app. We can also apparently can create a new guide using this interface, but I find it not to be very user-friendly, not as user-friendly as this guide right here. Here we know now we have two guides created and question is, where do we see them in the supply chain application? So first, what you have to do is navigate to the new Mixed Reality module. It only became available after we enabled that configuration, Mixed Reality, and then we click on the Setup. So here you would need to enter the URL of your CDS environment where your guide solution was deployed. Basically, it has a Part, the first part is your company name, more or less, then there's a CRM 3.4 based on the region, and then the last part is going to be dynamics.com. These two parameters, they are default, 15 and low, so I did not change them, but this is the most important one. You have to make sure that you point the system to the correct environment. Once that is done, we will go back to our re mixed reality module, and we will click on all guides. So here we will just see that we have three guides, one, the one, and the last one is the one we just created. So it usually takes less than a minute using the dual write. So it's a near real time integration, which is great. So now we see three different guides that were created. 
And the last step to the puzzle is to associate these guides with a specific entity. So for this, I will show you the options that are available for you in terms of the association. So here we can select a guide and associate it with a release product. So every time we have a production job for that release product, that guide will be available in our production floor execution interface. We can also associate a guide either with route or route version, which makes sense, right? If, a, if an operator is doing a specific operation that requires some sort of guidance, we can link that guide to that specific operation uh, in a route. There is also option to guide to a specific uh, route operation, not just a generic route, but a specific route operation. There is also ability for you to associate a guide either with a BOM or the BOM version, or if uh, there is a special instruction that I needed to operate a specific resource, a machine, we can associate guides either with resource, which represents usually a machine, if, unless it's a human resource, or the resource group, if we have a similar guide that applies to all the resources, all the machines in the same group, in the same category. So this is basically your, uh, your associa association option. What I noticed here is not really that intuitive, and I'm not sure if it's a bug or it's a uh, by design feature. I basically uh, do not see different. I was expecting, as I click on the, that top ver uh, section right here, I would expect the guide association to change, but apparently I just defined four different associations, two for BOM and BOM version, and another two for route and route version, and they all apply to the first guide. I was not able somehow to go and create different association for different guides. So I'm not sure if it's a bug or it's me doing something wrong. I would be interested to hear your feedback, guys. But uh, basically, all the association that I've done here uh, by default apply to my production guide one. But nonetheless, so basically that is um, our last step in terms of the configuration. So now we can actually see it in action. So let's go back to our um, production execution terminal right here. And if we select a specific job right here, for example, this one, we can now click on Guides button. That's the button that will generate this QR code, which was basically a trigger. Remember when we were authoring uh, Guides up, Guide here, we actually had to define an anchor as a QR code, basically that allows a uh, HoloLens device to scan that QR code and pull up the correct guide in a certain operation. So in here, we see that we're going to pull up the guide for the production guide one, right? So even though we have other guides available, but associations were only created for the production guide one. So that's basically a new feature that allows you to go click on the guides button, scan that QR code with your HoloLens device to activate that augmented reality guide that would help you either with specific operation or maybe setting up a specific machine or maybe doing a specific uh, job uh, that is associated with a release product. That is all I wanted to uh, cover during this uh, video today. I hope you found it useful, and until the next time, guys, take care.